All right, so we, uh, you guys got two handouts today. Um, first one is obviously exercise 218, which we're going to work on today. And the second one is assignment 205, which is your final project of the class. We technically are more than halfway through the class, so it's not too bad to be giving this to you right now. Uh, but the truth is that uh, having done this many semesters in a row, I found that a lot of the things that we're going to start working on in Rhino, it's helpful if you have a good, well-developed model that is your own that you can work from. So we'll, we'll move into rather, rather short order. We'll move into lighting and creating lights and inserting lights and ultimately to that sought after night rendering uh, and how to kind of get that set up and what have you. But <coughs> sorry, uh, it's a lot easier if you have a model to work with. And so I'm going to spend the next two class days this whole week giving you essentially a full three hours or two hours and 40 something minutes to work on this. And so at the end of this week, I have an expectation that your uh, assignment 205 geometry, essentially your, your cabin, is very well developed. You guys have the skills to, to really develop this and um, you know, get it ready for production mode. It doesn't mean that after the end of this week, you're going to completely stop working on it. Obviously, you're going to keep tweaking it. You're going to make it better. Uh, all the designs that have been done in the past weren't resolved in just two class days. But if you have this, you'll learn a lot from it, and you then have something to work with. Otherwise, I'd have to give you something uh, arbitrary to play around with, and it, you just wouldn't learn as much. So I think you'll get a lot more out of it if you spend the time working on it um, now. So uh, in terms of the assignment, it's the same as it was last semester. Actually, it's the same as it's been for several semesters. Um, you are going to be making a 500 square foot artist's retreat. You can pick the artist, and that is very loose in its definition. But if you want this to be, you know, basically, the more you want to take this, the more you can be specific to a particular artist. Um, both There's two locations. One is on the coast. I'm going to show you the locations in just a second. The other one is up near Lake Tahoe. You can pick either location. Obviously, each location has different uh, advantages and disadvantages. Both are not currently accessible by road. So this is a retreat where you'd walk to this particular location or you'd hike to this location to really get away from things. Uh, in the nature of construction, let's say you have access to a helicopter and your budget is non-existent. It doesn't matter. You can, uh, you can, you can fly things in as appropriate. Uh, I do want you to be aware of the topography, so aware of the site itself, and aware of things like what's north, what's south, what has sun, what has daylight, where the winds come from, that sort of thing uh, as part of it. Um, in terms of program in your retreat, there's probably some kind of a sleeping space, a cooking space. There's probably something to do with the artist. There's a studio space or a practice space or whatever, a shop, I don't know. Um, there probably should be some kind of a bathroom. We'll assume for the, for the moment that you have access to sewer and, and utilities and that sort of thing in this location. Um, so I'll show you those, those two things. As we go forward, um, you're going to be required four renderings as part of this. And it, this all spells it out. And I'll remind you a, a bunch. One exterior daylight rendering, one interior daylight rendering, one exterior night rendering, and one interior night rendering. So there's four primary renderings that you'll be doing as part of this. High resolution, good quality, lots of detail, great materials, etc. Obviously, to do the night rendering, you have to do lights, and you have to install lights, and that sort of thing, which you don't know how to do just yet, but we will cover. The other thing that I found is that um, all too often, people, are, people used to go through this class great at rendering, but they had no idea how to get quality line drawings out of Rhino so that you could do sections and elevations and plans and whatever. Rhino isn't as good as AutoCAD, for example, at doing line weights and that kind of thing. But it's really good, once you have this established great 3D model, at making line drawings. Like we can cut sections. We can do plans. We can do a lot of stuff with our 3D model. And so I want to emphasize that. You will need to do two drawings. Um, one is a plan and one is a section. If you'd like to do an elevation, I'm OK with that too. Uh, if you'd like to give me more than four renderings, that's OK too. 
but the minimum is four renderings and two drawings, plan and section. We will cover all of those as you go forward. This is part of the reason that you need a well-developed model is because if you're going to cut plans and sections, we need a well-developed model to do that. No surprise. Okay. So all of the things like, uh, I think probably the best way of illustrating this, I could give you some arbitrary file and you could learn to cut a section through it. If you cut a section through your actual retreat file, you'll learn a lot more because it's your file at how to do it. So that's the reason that you're doing this now so that you're ready a little bit later on. All of this is due on Monday, December 11th, which is that first Monday in finals week. I always do it on the first Monday so that you guys can get it done because you're dealing with other stuff. When's 2.20 due? Do you know yet? Hopefully on Wednesday. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to panic. But uh, anyway, this is Monday. Um, I, our final time is from 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, so it's different than the normal class schedule. 10.30, we start a little bit early. You guys get out a little bit early. Um, you will print all of your stuff on 11 by 17 sheets. You don't have to do a fancy InDesign layout or anything. I just need one image per 11 by 17. Um, the reason that I do this is they ultimately go into a semester book at the end of the semester. So this is the spring semester's final. Right, and all of their drawings are in here. So I'll throw this in the back, and you can look at it. The renderings never look as good when they're printed out as they do on on the computer. But there's a few in here that are decent, like this one turned out pretty well, for example, in print form. So the point is that I always do this so that I have a record of what everybody does, which is why I need the 11 by 17s. Um, we'll put them out on the table in the back, or we'll hang them on the wall, depending on what's going on, um, and you guys will be able to see it. And then you'll eat your donut, and life will be good. Um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of where we're going with that. The class is officially over at 12.30 on Monday the 11th of December. So that's it. You can't submit any more comments after that. You can't, well, you can, but it won't count. Uh, or if you just love writing comments, you can comment all through winter break. That's, that's up to you. Um, but you have to turn everything in. All your regrades are due. Officially, that's the end. That's the cutoff for everything, OK? So I just like to kind of emphasize that. So in terms of what we're doing today, we're going to start by doing kind of a site analysis. I want you guys to become familiar with the area, uh, decide on which site you plan on doing. And then you're just going to work on the geometry of the house or the, the, the retreat. So it's about that space. It's about designing that space. You guys get a good two and a half hour chunk to work on that today. Go for it. The more you do, the better. Next class, we'll talk about establishing the system of blocks and how you reference one file to the other and how you bring that house into the site. Uh, and so we'll deal with those kinds of, of, of problems next class. So in terms of the, um, the sites themselves, I have a, um, a zip file here that has uh, information on the building sites in it. It's available on the course website if you go to assignment 205 and you click on the zip file with site information. I believe it's also listed under today's exercise, so you can get it to, get to it either way. When you click on that uh, zip file, it'll download. If you extract it, there's a few things. There's a SketchUp site for both of these. Notice SketchUp site, you can bring it into Rhino. I'm trying to make it relatively easy for you. Uh, but there's also two Google Earth files. Uh, if you double click on site one, for example, it will open up Google Earth. Maybe. And it will let us zoom in. <clears throat> this first one is near Lake Tahoe. There's Lake Tahoe going away. Let me zoom back out a little bit so you can get some reference here. So there's Lake Tahoe out over there. This is for the people that like the Sierras and want to be in that kind of a context. Uh, it is on the side. As we zoom in here, it's on the side of this little cliff right here in this bowl. Let me swing around a little bit. If you prefer to be up on the top, you can be up on the top of this, this shoulder here. If you want to be out anywhere in here in the bowl, all that's OK. okay? It's not a very specifically defined site. Uh, the good thing about working with, the, uh, with Google is that we can see some of the various views of what we're seeing as you look through here. 
and you can you can spend some time looking around at what it is. High Sierras, uh, low scrub grass, rocks, that kind of thing is what we're looking at. Nice, you know, long range views toward mountains and that sort of thing as well. Um, so spend some time looking around. There's a great view looking out toward Lake Tahoe if I can find an image that would show us. We might have to go further up to the top. Of course not. Come on. These people are terrible at tagging pictures. They're all looking the opposite way. Come on, somebody. Give me a view looking the other direction. There we go. Looking out toward Tahoe. That was, that was the view I was looking for. Yeah. And panorama. Anyway, yeah, something like that. Okay, I'm just trying to give you a sense for, for where this is. Uh, this is near South Lake Tahoe, if you're, if you're interested in, in finding it. Anyway, um, you guys can spend some time looking at this and deciding where um, you want it to go and looking through the pictures. Site 2 is over on the coast near Point Reyes. Interesting, we have the black and white version of this. Um, anyway, Point Reyes traditionally comes out this direction, but this whole sliver here, you're going to be way out at the end of this point right there. There's some nice pictures out at the end that you can see. It's a very California coast. So maybe referencing, you know, Sea Ranch or something like that. Cliffs on the side. I'm okay if you want to build on the side, you know, perched out on one of these little cliffs. There's a beach nearby. Um, if you want to be up on the top in the flat section, that's fine. Obviously, our general orientation, the sun's going to set over here. So you're going to be looking out that way. You're going to have strong offshore winds, etc. Okay. So spend a little bit of time investigating and, and looking at these pictures and really seeing what's happening. There you go. As you zoom in, you can kind of see the cliffside and, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of where you place your building on this particular site as well. Um, don't worry too much about terrain. We're going to work with it. Obviously, if you're going to go on the side of a cliff, you want to have your building stacked up so that it's taller rather than flat. If you're thinking it's going to be more on the top surface here, you're going to go more flat. I'll talk about how do you manipulate your building to comp accomplish it, but you have to have a little bit of vision. Do you want it you know, on the side of the hill with stairs, or do you want it more flat? You have to kind of sort through that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Are there any questions about all this? No? So again, the goal for you guys is to spend your time working today. Um, I expect after today and Wednesday that you will have a lot of this kind of resolved. You'll have a good design going forward. Uh, that should help you. Recognize this does have a slider here. Let's see if we can get a more colored version here. There we go. There's the colored version. That's what the one I was looking for. Anyway, um, more resolved the better, more detailed the better, um, and we'll go we'll go into more detail about the integration later. Yeah. So just to see if I understood well, the piece of land raised in SketchUp is basically this um, the RT plane, and we can work anywhere on that land. Yep. That land. Okay. Exactly. It's very loose. It's very loose in terms of where it is. Um, trying to be flexible, to, you know, to accommodate a, a, a large varying program. Okay. Yes, it, it is definitely your own. So this is all your own. Um, if you're more advanced and you want to use this as more a you know portfolio piece, then tying it more into who the artist is, why you're designing a certain way, that can be helpful in terms of uh, snowballing this. If you're earlier in your design career and you want to keep it simpler, I mean, you could even argue that you yourself are an artist, so you could be doing it for yourself. I mean, it, it's meant to be loose, but at the same time, you can see where. You could take it, you know, you could do a Richard Serra building and it's going to be all Corten steel or whatever, depending on your, your um, interest in pushing the, the program uh, and the theme. All right? So I'll turn you loose now. I know it was short, me talking, but it gives you a good solid hour and a half or, or two and a half hours to work on this. The more production you have, the better. 